Hi folks, uh, yesterday I have uh, uploaded uh, my outdoor test of my newly made uh, disc spoons. Here's one of stainless steel and one of copper sheet. And uh, there was some interest on YouTube and on the site, so uh, I decided to show you how I make these disc spoons. Um, I will make it of copper sheet because uh, stainless steel sheet I cannot work down here with my uh, hobby tools. It requires uh, industrial grade uh, power tools like big grinding wheel to grind them to shape so uh, and uh, quality drill press I do not have this down here so my tool gear is sufficient for copper sheet stainless steel sheet would be too difficult too much headache too inaccurate and too time consuming to work down with my uh, power tools which I've got here so I'm doing this at my work during break times because I have as access there to a, a good drill press and a grinding wheel for uh, grinding down the outer shape so I'm just uh, doing it with copper sheet today basically the working process is the same working with copper comes easier since the material is a lot softer uh, same counts for brass, if you can assess brass sheet, it's pretty much like copper sheet, only stainless steel is m tougher to work on, yeah. So, uh, I would uh, show you how to mark the spoon on the sheets, how to cut them out, how to shape them, how to grind them in the, into the round shape, how to do the cupping with a ball peen hammer and do, do the drilling work. I would not polish them in front of the camera. I would not uh, assemble them uh, because I have shown that in some other videos of mine before. I will give you the links to these videos in the YouTube video description so please check this one out. So and I guess all of this would uh, provide a good impression on so that you could uh, make these spoons at home as well provided you've got the right gear and uh, tool gear which most home builders do have anyway as said before working with copper and brass sheet is, is not that hard stainless steel is harder so I'm gonna go with copper all right, let's get started. All right, here's my copper sheet. First, I want it to be plain. See, I'm using a tempered steel plate, which is ground plain. You may use an anvil as well, but uh, it's, it's uh, of advantage if the surface is plain because any nicks or blemishes inside of the surface will indent into your sheet okay now you have it plain we want to make a spoon 50 millimeters diameter uh, two inches so we must mark the look the center first so 25 spot here and that one will not work out so mm, now it won't fit this way the line should be here somewhere okay will not fit up here so we must uh, go this way maybe I'll start with the, uh, with the corner here so that's easier bit more than 25 and uh, 
25 here, so this should be my center. Um, a 90 degree center punch. Okay. And now 25 millimeters, one inch would be here. Okay. Now we take a circle with a needle, not with a pen tip, pencil tip, because scratching the marker line into the material is much more accurate than doing it with any kind of pencil line or felt pen line. Don't know if you can see this on video. It's not that visible. But it's much more accurate this way as if doing it with a pencil or felt pen marker line. Okay, now we have marked the outline of the spoon. Okay, now change camera position. To cut out the spoon blank, I'm using hand shears. You see, I have to use quite a bit of strength. This is 1.5 copper sheet and uh, this is the limit for these shears. You will not be able to cut stainless steel with this. You would need bench shears for that and I don't have suitable ones. 1.5 millimeter brass sheet would work as well but you cannot cut stainless steel this way. It's impossible. 0.5 millimeters you can still cut with these hand shears but not thicker one okay this is it and now we're taking shears for curved cuts and you want to be very accurate to the marker line because the more close you get to the marker line, the less material you would have to uh, grind away later. So, uh, this shears has a shorter blade, so it's suitable to cut a radius. The bigger one I used previously is only for cutting uh, straight cuts. And in fact this one cuts a bit better than the larger one. But as said before 1.5 copper or 1.5 mil brass is the limit for these hand tools. Stainless steel, you need to cut with bench shears or with a band saw and a metal blade. Of course you need to take care not to have your fingers in between the two edges of the shears. You see you need quite a bit of uh, elbow grease for this uh, thing. Okay, now it's a bit tricky to get the narrow parts away. Okay, now it's reasonably round. So now grinding down to the marker line is in order. All right. Okay. Uh, I would use this uh, 40 grit sanding disc to grind down the spoon blank 
to the marker line uh, never cease to wear eye protection with any grinding or polishing operation very important save your uh, your eyes wear eye protection okay <laughs> Okay, after this little uh, grinding the copper sheet has already gotten too hot to handle so I put it on the steel plate here to cool down. One might as well use a, a water bucket to dip it in, in, to, in between the uh, grinding processes. Okay, because it gets real hot stainless steel doesn't get as hot because you know copper transmits uh, heat quite well you see I can't handle it anymore I'm gonna get my water bucket Okay, got my water bucket placed on, it, on my chair behind me. You can't see it, but it's there. You see I'm always canting the workpiece to uh, be able to see the marker line as this thing reflects the light of the bulb here. I do not have very good lighting down here but it's still manageable. You see Dipping this thing in water helps a great deal. I'm almost there. I'm fondling it against the light to see whether there are still places that have to be ground. Yeah, I'm alright with this one fairly round it is you see so let's change wheels now taken off the 40 grit uh, sanding disc for this one with segmented uh, with pieces of uh, sandpaper this is for smoothing up the rough edge now The material has been built up here and we want to take this away so we grind the uh, sand down the circumference with the built up material off.
This wheel will not take much material off anymore. It's just to get a smoother surface. not that smooth. I'll still change to another wheel I guess. But I'll take off the built up material now. Break the edges. This side comes harder. Eh. That's not so good, but the final partial polishing will take it away. Now the other side breaking the edges. Another one. <laughs> Display effect. Okay, changing wheels again. Uh, okay, changing to this wheel. Safety goggles. This one made the edge quite smooth. Okay, I'm done. Okay, now we've got our blank uh, round, perfectly round, I would say, uh, edges uh, smoothened and edges broken. So now we are marking the attachment holes for the uh, line tie and hook. Take the geometric triangle and draw a felt, thin felt pen line through the center indention. All right, and uh, we want our attachment holes to be four millimeters off the edge. Right, this is four millimeters. And now we do a center indention there as well. This is for your drill bit to find instant grip and it will not wander. Okay, the holes are going to be maybe three millimeters, so you've got 1.5 uh, millimeters rim left. When working with copper and brass sheet, you will want the rim a bit wider. I'm talking about this rim here. You see what this stainless steel, let me show you. This rim in copper should be 1.5 minimum, maybe two, because the sheet is quite soft. In case of a very big fish or a bad snack, you do not want to deform or even tear the soft copper. Stainless steel does not have to be too thin, uh, too narrow the rim. I still did it here because I did them all alike. So uh, 
take care when using copper and brass do not leave this uh, rim too narrow that's it okay did the center indention now now it's time to drill okay now drilling the holes pre-drilling them actually with 1.5 millimeter diameter See, copper is quite soft, comes quite easy. Aha, the drill bit snapped off. I didn't watch out. See, it got stuck in there. Uh, I will show you now. Don't know if you can see it. This sometimes happens with these cheap drills I'm using. These cheap bits, drill bits. Uh, it's stuck in there. I could pull it out like this with pliers because it's uh, protruding. But I will show you a trick now how to uh, get this uh, piece of the drill bit out of the material. It sometimes happens with soft copper if you don't watch out. So I will show you the trick now how to get this thing out. Okay, little mess happened. My drill bit snapped off. Still sticking in here. And I want to get it out. So you put it in the open vise. You see there's a little indention here. Use your center punch. And put it on the dome. You hit it. It's still there. Give it another punch, another blow. Never came out. There's still some more. Yeah, that's the problem with the soft copper. I did it with stainless steel before and uh, it came out. So now I'm looking for my pliers. I still have to use pliers to try to get it out. Uh, no, no wonder I hit the wrong spot. That's Murphy's Law. Never came out. Nope. Now it's out. Okay. I'm gonna beat this thing flat again a bit so we can carry on. Okay. Okay. I can continue drilling now. Okay, yeah, when after I would have extended the hole, it won't be visible anymore. This is if you buy cheap drill bits from flea markets. Okay, now I must change drill bits. I'll put this off. Change to a bigger bit now, just to break the edges. Okay, that was it for the drilling. 
little mess occurred. Murphy's Law when filming, I'm pretty much used to it. 